Marie was delivered by a family friend, physician Dr. Ross, and uh, within two minutes of Marie being born, uh, she came up to Nick and I and said, I think she might have a touch of Down syndrome. My biggest worry, would she be able to do art? And I had, I had met a nurse whose brother had Down syndrome, and she said, yeah, she said she'll be able to do that and a lot more. So I knew at that point everything was going to be all right. That, this was when she was a baby, and I was sitting there drawing, and, and um, they, were, they had told me I was doing physio and, and OT stuff with her, and I put the book down, and, and I gave her a chunk of alpha chalk, and she started scribbling, and her face was amazing. She looked, she realized, you know, right away, six Mom, months, she went, oh, like, is she looked it? at it and had this whole, like, recognition. Mom, hey, it said. It? It says Marie's first drawing, February 4th, 1991. Charcoal, Catch Harbor, almost six months old. So you weren't quite six months. Okay, so in, in childhood art development, here's how it starts. First thing they do is this. Rub it on the paper. They'll make a mark. Yes, eventually they'll figure out that this thing can go around and around and around. This will go on for quite some time. Now, in Marie's case, she started to do this at about five and a half months, I think it was, and when she made her first marks. And then at some point in drawing development, and I, I, I remember when Marie did this, that you could take that line, try really hard to make those two ends line up, and make a circle. And then they start putting stuff inside. And it looks like a person. And then they call it Mama, Dada, whatever. So once they get to this stage, they start to add clothing. And then things start to get, they, they get more and more embellishment. Trees and houses and buildings and uh, scenarios and narratives. This is where Marie is at, between the pre-schematic and the schematic stage. But she's taken that developmental stage through the roof up that way 10,000 hours worth and in so doing that has discovered many things that most children will never discover and most adults won't discover until they go through the whole darn thing and they become very very adept at art have you know professional careers and then they go back to pull out from their uh, early years um, the things of, of their creative past. I, by watching her, when I'm drawing and painting sometimes, I think, well, what would Marie do? <laughs> I think in a way, it's in this case, it's the shapes and the colors and how she's uh, that dominant blue and ochre, how they go together. And then she's got that middle sort of gray, reddish gray in there, which is very, very nice. As you say, where does it come from? We made things for, Ma for Marie um, right from yeah. the time she was born. You know, I think she was just in a house of making. I mean, that's about the best way I can put it. My name is Nick Webb, Marie's father. I've taught a lot of things. I, I was uh, chair of art education at NASCAD. I started as a, as a ceramist, functional ceramist in the kind of typical yes, stoneware yes, Japanese English tradition. She has a tendency to get something happening uh, and then she'll pursue that. She'll do nothing else but that, right, for a, for a while. So she was doing a lot of black outlining and uh, it was killing a lot of the color, right? Cause when we work with Marie on a drawing or, or a painting, the chances of her doing what we anticipate she will do 
are very slim. I mean, they might look that way to begin with, but they almost always, when we come back two hours later, are nothing like where we thought that was going. Right? So I was just showing it how to use the white pen over the black lines, you know, to drop it back a bit, right, make it a bit more subtle. So then, of course, she does nothing but white pen lines for days, right? But, and then what'll happen is she'll start to use what was happening here in these a little differently. So the lines will appear a week later a little differently than they do here because this is the time when she was going crazy doing nothing else. Uh, in teaching Marie, it's not about giving her limited direction. It's really about giving her an abundance of yeah, Marie-specific yeah. <laughs> direction <laughs> so that we're sensitive to where she's at, what she's doing developmentally and in her realm of her world and her love and her subject matter and her, her use of materials and then easing her and showing her, hey, this might work or that might work. Want to try this? Want to try that? And then she, she ultimately makes that choice. Well, she wants to, she might take a couple of steps and say, screw this, and she has. I've, I've shown her things, she doesn't want to do it. Okay, whatever, you know. What is this? Do you, do you have a name for this? I got stars. I like stars. In my favorite. I think we need art. We, we not only love it and engage in it all the time, yeah. but we need it. So this represents you? Yes. The need for art is the need to communicate. It's the need to communicate directly, spontaneously, and without words. It is a, a language of celebration. I, 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 she is somebody who finds joy in looking for the next celebration because that's what makes people happy. And being happy is what we're here for. <laughs> it's a simple philosophy, right? <laughs>